What if I told you that this could be the best years of your life? Unlike what you've heard from the media, from the aging creams company, from the Botox sellers, aging can actually be a great thing. You can actually do the best things in your life after the age of 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And what if I told you that there are specific tools that I can give you that you can take and use them to actually do that? Hi again, it's Dr. Amy Shah. This is episode two. So today I'm going to be talking about redoing a talk that I did on Saturday, this past Saturday, January 20th. I did a talk in Scottsdale about my message to women in perimenopause. And I think it resonated really well to the live crowd. And so I wanted to kind of, not that I want to redo it, but do a version of it for you here today. First of all, I wanted to thank my sponsor, Trulean. They have this amazing wellness shot that has turmeric and ginger. And it's like spicy and just a little bit sweet. And it's really an amazing way to get your wellness ingredients in in the morning. I used it for a long time before I ever got to be have them as a sponsor. I'm so grateful because I'm brand new and they're giving you 50% off. You just have to use the code Dr. Shaw 50 and I'll put the link for you so that you can get that. Um, so let's get started. So just to give you a little bit of background, imagine we were in a live event. There is about a little over a hundred people, women in the audience, and we were talking about, you know, this crazy world called perimenopause. And perimenopause is the years in your 30s, late 30s, 40s, 50s. It's this huge time span in women's lives where they're going through all these changes and nobody really tells you about it and nobody really gives you insight about what's happening to your body and you're kind of feeling down and tired and seeing all these changes and you don't know what to do. So that's kind of the background for what this group got together to talk about and celebrate each other. New year, new you. So that being said, let's get started. So, okay, I'm going to give it to you straight. You only get 4,000 weeks if you're lucky. 4,000 weeks is the average amount of weeks that a human will get in their lifetime. And if you're like me, you're way past the halfway point. I have passed the 2,000 week point. And for a lot of you that are here, you've probably passed that point as well. So think about it. What are you going to do with the 2,000 weeks that you have left? And 2,000 if we're lucky, right? What are you going to do with this time that we've been given? We've already been, we're done with half of it. It's gone. And for a lot of us, we're going to look back and say, oh my God, where did that time go? What about all the things I wanted to do? What about all the things I wanted to be? What about the things I want to be remembered for? What about the things I want to try? What about the ways I want to feel or sports I want to do or the contributions I want to make to the world? And, you know, you only have 2,000 weeks or less to do it. And you might think, you know, I'm too old. It's too late. Forget it. Like I already passed the point of starting anything new or making anything big in this world, I'll remind you that this year, 2023, 80% of the Forbes 500 top women were over the age of 50. So let that sink in. 80% of the women that are doing big things in the business world are over the age of 50. By the way, in general, the Forbes list, uh, the average age is 70. So you can tell that it's not too late and you can do big things. Right now, women are dominating in music. Look at Beyonce, look at Taylor Swift in the box office, look at, you know, the Barbie movie. This is your time. Don't listen to the old memories of what people said. Oh, you know, being in your 40s, 50s, 60s and beyond, people think, oh, that's too late to do anything big in your life, to be in your best shape, to have your best mind, to do the best things. But it's, I'm telling you, it's not. Biologically, we know that we are capable of building new muscle, building new brain cells, building companies, building new friendships, building relationships well past your 
20s and 30s. And so I want you to think about this. You know, with those 2,000 weeks you have left, do you want to waste those weeks? Do you want to keep just doing what isn't serving you? And then by the end of all of this, you'll look back and you're like, oh gosh, I wasted all this time. This is your chance to wake up and do it now. The time is now. And people think, oh, well, this is, you know, this is new age stuff. This is not something that I want to do or that people have done in history. But let me remind you that humans are pretty much the only species in the entire animal kingdom, besides two species of whales, that live well past menopause. What that means is in most animal species, as soon as you can't give birth, women cannot procreate, they die shortly after. So your ovaries are basically your ticking time bomb, right? For human women, and there's some evolutionary reasons why they think that women live decades, many decades past the time that their ovaries involute and a menopause hits. And we think it's because women contribute so much to society and so much to the well-being of the people around them well past their childbearing years that humans evolved to live well past menopause, the female species. So if that's not motivation for you to get going and get on with your goals, I don't know what is. What if I told you that this could be the best years of your life? That unlike what you've heard from the media, from the creams, you know, aging creams company, from the Botox sellers, aging can actually be a great thing. You can actually do the best things in your life after the age of 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And what if I told you that there are specific tools that I can give you that you can take and use them to actually do that. So you only get 4,000 weeks, if, and that's if you're lucky. You have 2,000 or less left. So let's make the most of this. So what's the first thing I'll tell you? Is you have to change the way you think. Number one is your brain is not just your mind. Your brain gets input from your gut. Your gut-brain connection is so strong that you can harness that in improving both your mental health and your physical health. So let me explain. When we're craving something, it's often coming from our gut bacteria. When we feel motivated, it's often coming from our gut bacteria. When we have depression or anxiety, it's often coming from our gut bacteria. Now, there's a bi-directional relationship between our brain and our gut, but our gut is often telling our brain what to do. And that gut bacteria, that dopamine that the gut bacteria make, that's stronger than our own dopamine. Meaning that if you want to be more motivated, so you know, produce more dopamine, if you want more strength, if you want more happiness, you've got to improve your gut health. And historically speaking, as you get older, your gut health starts to become poor. Your gut microbiome um, starts to change as your estrogen levels for women and testosterone levels uh, with men change. So your gut microbiome will change and you might experience things like, oh, your cholesterol is rising and your vitamin D is falling and you're not getting enough magnesium. And these are because your gut microbiome is changing with the changing of your hormones. But that doesn't mean that you need to have worse gut health and in turn, worse mental health than when you were younger. There's very, very good evidence that improving your gut health will improve your hormonal symptoms, will improve your perimenopausal transition, will improve your mood, will improve your motivation. And when I'm telling you that we only have limited time, you want to harness the power of that gut-brain connection in helping you get to those goals. So how can you do that? You want to improve the number and the diversity in your microbiome. So there's this whole world that lives in your gut, in your intestines. In fact, we only have one layer of cells of our own cells. The rest of it is bacteria that don't belong to us. They just live there and they help us digest. They help create hormones. Yes, I said it, create hormone. They help reduce hormones in our system. 
Um, they help send signals to the brain to tell them what's happening in our gut. And that gut brain connection is so powerful that if you transplant just the gut bacteria from one person to another, you can change their entire mental state. You can transplant things like schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, ADHD, autism, just by transplanting the gut bacteria. So we know that the gut microbiome has the power to help you be more motivated, to help you become a stronger person, to help you become happier, to help you balance your hormones during this time, to help you extract the calories from food that you want and not too many and not too little, to extract the nutrients. So you really want to feed and grow that garden. It's like the Amazon jungle in there and you want to have that flourish. Not do what we thought for many years we should do, which is kill all the bacteria in our gut. We were taking antibiotics when we don't really need them. Um, Antibacterial cleansers and antibacterial uh, tonics and all these things that we don't need to be doing, in fact, is hurting us more than it's helping us. So first thing you can do to really make the most of your body and mind health is take care of that gut-brain connection. It will help your hormone transition. It will help your motivation. It will help your happiness levels. And that can be your biggest tool in the way that you're going to live your best life. The second thing is change up your mornings. So gone are the days where you can wake up in the morning super sleep deprived and stressed, have a bunch of cups of coffee and be on your way. I know this resonates with some of you because you've probably been doing it for many, many years and it used to work for you, right? Like it used to work when you're in your teens and 20s and then all of a sudden it's not working for you anymore. And I'll tell you why. Because as you go into perimenopause as a woman, you get into a state that we call less stress resilient. That means that you're less tolerant to the body and mind stresses that you used to be. So the same things that you used to be tolerate, like that used to tolerate and didn't raise your cortisol as much now really has huge effects on your body, your brain, and your hormones. So you really want to work on decreasing your stress levels in your body and in your mind. Perimenopause is a time where you're not going to be as resilient to stress. So not getting enough sleep, eating nothing but sugary foods, um, having caffeine, in excess, having alcohol in excess, all of these things put a lot of stress on your body. Not getting enough sunlight, not having enough connection, eating processed fried foods. These are things that are putting a lot of stress on your body. And as you move through these years of perimenopause, like I said, it can range from late 30s, but definitely 40s and 50s. You're going to feel the effects of it. So if you're trying to live your best life and you're trying to live with urgency, you have to change the way you start your day and end your day. So let's talk about starting your day, okay? Let's start your day with the three Fs. I highly recommend to all the people I work with that you start your day with the three Fs. The three Fs, number one F is fasting. We are not meant to eat 16 plus hours a day. Just like your brain needs rest, your gut bacteria needs rest. For so many of us, 40 years have gone by and your gut bacteria have never gotten a good night's rest because you're keeping them up all the time by eating late into the night and then eating first thing in the morning. Average American eats about 16 plus hours a day. That means there's only eight hours for the gut bacteria to rest. We think we need at least 12 hours of rest for these gut bacteria to actually do their job. And if you understand the science and you understand what you're saying, you want those gut bacteria to be rested so that they can do their job and be at their peak shape because they're going to help you produce hormones, um, get rid of old hormones. They're going to help you produce happy hormones. They're going to help send neurotransmitters to the brain. They're going to help send things called short-chain fatty acids, which I'll talk about, to the brain to lower inflammation all over the body. And so you really do want to give your body a fast every single night. And that can be 12 
That can be 13. That can be 14. It doesn't have to be these super, super long extended fasts, especially in perimenopause, which I said, you want to keep the stress levels pretty low. So you want to do things that are not super stressful, like a mile stretch from what you're doing. So if you're eating usually late until 10 p.m. at night, I want you to take a break. I want you to do say 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. break of 12 hours, okay? Uh, Or maybe it's 7 p.m. to 9 a.m. and take a break for 14 hours. Fasting is the first F. The second F, really, really important in living your best life um, in perimenopause is fitness. Fitness is, if you can do it in the morning, statistically shows that you will be more likely to stick with it, which I think everybody knows. Like if you get your workout done in the morning, you're more li- likely to stick with it. But even if you can get a few minutes in sunlight, stretching, walking around, like today I wasn't able, and many days I'm not able to get a full workout in the morning, but I spend two to five minutes outdoors getting natural sunlight because those circadian rhythms, those sunlight, natural light that goes into your eyes resets all the hormonal pathways in your brain um, through the hypothalamus. And um, that movement really kickstart the happiness levels of the gut bacteria. So the gut bacteria, when you exercise, whether it's a morning or afternoon or evening, they get really happy when you exercise. They produce something called short-chain fatty acids. And these are very, very useful anti-inflammatory compounds in your body. They go to your brain, calm the inflammation in your brain. They go to your muscles. They go to all your organs. So think about it. All the diseases of the modern world, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, are from inflammation. So imagine if you could produce for free an anti-inflammatory compound that goes all over your body and calms the inflammation. And then you wonder why people who exercise live longer. They have better health outcomes, cardiac outcomes. Um, They have happier lives. They have calmer brains. It's because of this gut-brain connection. It's because this gut bacteria produces these things called short-chain fatty acids and they go all over the body and put like a blanket of anti-inflammatory everywhere. So the second F of the morning is fitness. And if you can't get in the morning, you can do it some other time of the day. But remember, the morning time is the best way. And if you can get get it a few days a week, especially if you can get it outdoors, that's the ideal situation. And I know a lot of you are writing to me from the Midwest where it's dark and icy and stormy and A lot of you have recommended to get happy lights from Amazon, which are these sun lamps that act as the sun. Um, You can also go out in the gray sky. You don't, it doesn't have to be sunny. It's really just getting that light and that movement in, um, even if it's a few minutes a day. The third F, and maybe the most important, is food. The food that you eat in the morning sets the stage for the entire day, especially when you're in perimenopause. You want fiber. You want at least. 25 to 40 grams of fiber every single day. And guess what? 95% of Americans aren't even getting the recommended 25 grams. You would be outside of the box if you even got uh, 25 grams. And I'm asking you to get even more if you really want to optimize that gut-brain connection. Fiber is a very important part of your breakfast. And I'll give you some examples. Protein. Okay, let me tell you this. We lose muscle mass as we age. Okay, about 1% to 3% per decade. But when we get into menopause, guess what? That goes to 1% to 3% a year. I know, it's crazy. But the hormonal shifts, especially the decrease in estrogen, really decreases our muscle mass. And um, to counteract that, we have to do something. We have to do weight training, so resistance training at least two to three times a week. And you have to eat more protein, meaning adequate levels of protein. I'm not talking, you know, hundreds and 200 and 300 grams. I'm talking something that is adequate for you. If you're in perimenopause and you're actively trying to build muscle, that is 0.8 to 1 gram of pound of body weight. And you could, you know, err on the side 0.8 or you can go all the way up to 1 gram per pound if you're really aggressively trying to build muscle. And that is something that you'll start with. If you are trying to get 100 grams plus in a day, then you probably want to start your breakfast with at least 30 grams of protein to set yourself up for a really great day. If Even if you're 
you know, aiming for 80, 90 grams, you really want to start with that breakfast of 30 grams. And I'll, again, I'll give you examples of what that looks like. And the third piece of this food is fermented slash probiotic food. Probiotic food. What is that? It's food with actual bacteria in it. I know that sounds so crazy. Like, why would you want to eat food with real bacteria? But remember what I told you, this gut microbiome, that's a secret to your good health. You want to replace all the things that you've done to kill those gut bacteria with actual bacteria. So yogurt, probiotic yogurt, not the Yoplait or Dannon with the fruit on the bottom and the sugar and the M&Ms on top. I'm talking about real yogurt that says on the label, in America, you have to label things that have uh, bacteria in it. It'll say, you know, contains bifidobacterium or lactobacillus, or and you want to have probiotic cottage cheese. You can have raw apple cider vinegar, kimchi, sauerkraut. These are all probiotic foods that you want to include in your diet. And if you start your day with a breakfast with all of these things, then you're going to be ahead of the game. Basically, if you do nothing else, you will be really, really healthy, a much healthier gut than you ever had before. So I'm talking about maybe it's a tofu scramble, probiotic cottage cheese on the side. It might be an egg scramble with veggies, um, spices, and then maybe you have some apple cider vinegar and water. Maybe you have a yogurt parfait with fruit and nuts and berries. And that gives you your fiber, your protein, and your probiotic right there. Maybe you have a protein shake, but then you have some berries or veggies and kimchi or sauerkraut. A spoon of sauerkraut in the morning is something that we often do. So those are some ideas for you. Um, Simplest thing is you could put some raw apple cider vinegar on your salad, or you can have it in a big thing of water and carry it around during the day. As you know, apple cider vinegar is excellent for your gut health, uh, but it's also really, really a good way to consume a probiotic food. My favorite probiotic foods, honestly, are a probiotic cottage cheese, which I have almost every day. And I actually love um, things like miso and sauerkraut and and sometimes I'll add apple cider vinegar, just a little capful to my salad and just get my fermented food that way. But you want to aim for two to four servings a day. Honestly, the studies show that four to seven is the ideal number to get the most diversity in your gut microbiome. But I think if you even got two, you would be ahead of the game. So remember, what we're trying to do is we're trying to eat because we're trying to eat for good mindset, good physical health, and the ability to do all the things that we want to do in our lives. Okay. So starting to recognize the power of the gut-brain connection, starting with your three F morning. And then the next one I will say is what you input is what you output. What does that mean? When you're in perimenopause, The foods that you eat, the people you spend time with, the ideas that you have in your head, people you follow in real life, online, all of these are inputs and that creates our output. And so what you have to realize is that, okay, if you feel the urgency like I did when I realized I I don't have all the time in the world, I have a very limited time and I need to take advantage of this. I started to say, oh my God, what are my inputs that I'm putting in? Am I really curating the inputs or am I just, is there trash everywhere? It's like, you need to clear out. You need to make space for the good inputs. Get rid of some of those negative inputs. Clear out your desk, clear out your refrigerator, clear out your Instagram page, clear out the people that you're hanging out with, clear out your calendar. You want to curate the inputs so that you can really have a more intentional output. And if you're trying to live your best life right now, you really want to curate those inputs. So what are the foods that you're eating? Are you getting enough magnesium? Are you getting enough vitamin D? Are you getting enough omega-3? By the way, magnesium has had a glow up recently because a study that showed that 550 milligrams of magnesium in the diet anti-ages the brain. People who ate 550 milligrams of magnesium in their diet, which is contained in seeds, nuts, leafy greens, they had brains that were younger than people who ate the traditional amount of magnesium in their diet. What does that mean? If you want to live your best life, 
If you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is the time I need to take action. I need to go, you know, live my purpose. Um, I need to be happier. I need to surround myself with the people I want. You probably want to eat more magnesium in your diet. You probably want to up it to 550 milligrams a day. And that might mean in your diet plus a magnesium supplement for, for women in perimenopause. Most people will say uh, magnesium glycinate is the best one because it actually helps you relax at night. You take it before bed, it helps you sleep and it helps with perimenopausal symptoms. And that can help your boost your magnesium levels. So you want to eat it in the diet and you can get the magnesium um, as a supplement. You know, of course, it's always the best to get in the diet and that's what the studies really looked at. But you can supplement with magnesium glycinate, which is one of the ones that um, helps a lot with menopause. You want to supplement probably with vitamin D. I think almost every woman in perimenopause that I've ever seen is either low or extremely low um, on their vitamin D. You want to supplement probably with omega-3 fatty acids as input. So salmon, omega-3 fatty fish, or supplement with algae oil if you're vegan to get the amount of omega-3 to keep your brain fresh while you're living your best life. The other inputs are, God, we live in this input age, right? Are you following these toxic people, these toxic news channels? What are you putting in your mind? What are you thinking about? What are the thoughts that are coming just because you're scrolling and looking at these very toxic accounts? Start curating that because what you input is what you output. If you're always looking at negative things, um, negative people or people who make you feel really bad about yourself, that's what you're going to put out to the world. And if you curate what you're putting into your body, your mind, you're going to put out more amazing things into this world. And why I emphasize this is because as we get older, your skin might sag a little bit more. You might have a few more gray hairs. But what we do know that improves with age is the cells in our brain that are responsible for wisdom. And wisdom increases as we age. And for some of us, uh, it increases uh, more than others, right? But we have the power to have a stronger brain in so many different ways if we control our inputs. And so I think after learning so much about nutrition and health and exercise and mindset, you know, take away, get rid of the cigarettes, get rid of the pollution when you can, get rid of the toxins, the excessive alcohol. I mean, we know now that one drink a night is enough to age the brain. One drink a night. That's crazy, right? One glass of wine. And if you're getting, you know, seven weeks, seven drinks a week, that's too much, especially if you're worried about your brain and aging. You know, as you're trying to move through these years and live your best life, consider your relationship with alcohol or smoking if you do smoke or um, a toxic people and things that you're ingesting, that you're inputting, because that's going to affect your output. So it's not just about living longer, but it's having the brain capacity to live happily and to think clearly. I mean, we talk about sleep, right? We uh, All of us know how important sleep is because sleep is an input. What you input becomes your output. In fact, they showed that women in perimenopause almost always suffer with sleep issues. It's because our progesterone, as it goes down, it um, is our an anti-anxiety hormone. And so as progesterone goes down, we feel more anxious and also affects our sleep. So when you have progesterone, you feel sleepier, you feel more calm. And as in perimenopause, when those levels are fluctuating and going down, you feel more anxious and you don't sleep as well. When And that's the time you probably need most sleep. So syncing with your circadian rhythms and really getting that input of sun, when you get the input of the sun, your body automatically calculates that in a certain number of hours, I'm going to produce melatonin and help this person sleep. So if you're trying to improve your sleep and menopause, you want to be getting a lot of sunlight in the daytime and syncing your circadian rhythms and getting that input of sunlight so that you can sleep better at night. And when you sleep better at night, you know your appetite's better, your mood's better, your craving's better, and your brain feels better. So inputs create your outputs. This goes without saying, but I think as you get older, you realize that the people you are spending time with, both online and offline, are creating you. 
They are shaping your gut microbiome, literally. They are making you happy. They are making you more motivated. They are making you better at sports. I I mean, it's crazy. They're making you better at uh, math. They're making you uh, a more kinder person or a, a wiser person. And so spending time with people who are actually batteries and not vacuums is extremely important, especially in perimenopause because you're in a place where um, you're extremely sensitive to these changes. Your hormones are fluctuating and you need to be around people who really support the best version of you. So to sum it up for you, we have 4,000 weeks if we're lucky. And that's if we're lucky, right? We all know that life is very fragile and can be cut short any second. So what are you doing with the time that you have left? Are you curating your inputs? Are you eating the food to support your gut-brain connection? Are you moving in a way to douse yourself in anti-inflammatory short-chain fatty acids? Or are you just passively letting that time go away? And then 4,000 weeks passes by and you look at the end of your life and you're like, oh my God, I didn't take advantage of it. I'm telling you that these last 2,000 weeks can be the best weeks of your life. It shows up in media. It shows up in business. It shows up in history over and over again. There is empire, the Mongol empire, the matriarch, the mom of five kids, a single mom, is thought to be responsible for the success of the largest empire of the world. She taught her children how to run an entire empire. And she was a single mom with five children over the age of 40. And this is thousands of years ago. So I don't know what you're waiting for, but this is your time. There's no time better than right now. Don't waste your 4,000 weeks. Thanks for listening. Okay, awesome. Good. Um, 